That's right. And the judge in Seattle seems to have issued a very broad nation nationwide injunction. We're not even sure that the litigants here have standing. States don't have standing. Individuals would have standing. And an individual would have to show standing and also harm. So we think this is overbroad. It's a nationwide injunction. We also take uh, people aren't really talking much about the Boston judge, Lou, who found the exact opposite right. in his ruling uh, this weekend, where he said that he was not going to put a temporary restraining order on the on the executive order. And so we are confident that we will prevail on the merits. We know the Ninth Circuit is tough, but uh, as you say, presidents have very broad authority, but they also have a duty and a responsibility to keep their nation safe and that's what president trump is trying to effectuate here and uh referring to the ninth circuit court of appeals the most overturned the uh, the most uh, it's a far left court by any standard uh, it is i i would guess your your idea your expectation uh, that uh, you'll be moving forward to the supreme court with this case well, that could be. We have to see what their ruling is. I d certainly don't want to uh, guess there or project on that. But we're prepared to follow, to see this through, uh, to you know, its its natural result. And as I say, the co the president is confident that we will prevail on the merits, and he's very confident that he's within his constitutional and statutory authority to protect the homeland. I, I would point out to your viewers too, Lou. Uh, you may have been getting to it, but there is an AP story today that really caught my attention by Eric Tucker. He went and he fact-checked this judge in Seattle, Judge right. Robart, who claimed from the bench that the, the answer is zero, zero foreign nationals from these seven countries had been arrested since 9-11. That is just false. And I know the media is so into fact-checking uh, immediately, and they should really look at this article because uh, the judge said something. This is the judge, and he said something that's just not true. There have been foreign nationals that have been arrested. And, uh, and I want everybody to look at that because uh, it's a very important piece that's probably not getting much coverage. Well, I, I, with, uh, and thank you for doing so, but this uh, district uh, court judge in western Washington uh, put himself in the position of being uh, uh, rather uh, a, a person with broad views, as you suggest, that it ended up in his order. Uh, secondly, that he had better information than the president of the United States. And on its face, uh, his order, if I may say, uh, it makes him look rather silly. I, I don't think he will get too excited if I suggest that he is somewhat liberal and somewhat over his skis in terms of what he presumed to be able to order uh, from his bench in the western uh, uh, Washington State District. Uh, let, let's turn, if we may, to Obamacare and, uh, and its repeal and its replacement. The president acknowledging uh, to uh, Bill O'Reilly that uh, perhaps not this year, uh, today we learn that uh, the Speaker of the House thinks perhaps still by the end of spring there could be uh, some kind of replacement. Uh, what's going on here? I can tell you that the repeal and replacement of Obamacare is an item that has been very much in the president and before that president-elect's focus. Um, many meetings, we're waiting for our secretary of HHS, Dr. Tom Price, Congressman Tom Price, to be confirmed. That would be nice uh, so we can really get going here. But, you know, the Republicans have come up with three, four, as many as nine plans over time. So we do feel like there are many good elements that exist, Lou, that are going to allow Americans to buy health care across state lines. and increase the number of health savings accounts, maybe block grant Medicaid to the states. There are many different things that will happen. Um, but Obamacare has been around for almost seven years. It was March of 2010. So the roots and the tentacles go very deep here. And uh, they really need to be, I think, extracted. And we also want to make good on the president's promise that people who are relying upon it will not go without coverage during the transition process. Many moving parts here. Uh, Donald Trump keeps his promises. I think you've seen that in the first two weeks. Right. Uh, he's going to continue to do that, and repealing and replacing Obamacare is a big piece of that. And, you know, we need to work with Congress on the timeline as well, but, but we are. You know, as you say, the tentacles do run deep over the course of that time, but at the same time, the House of Representatives has uh, repealed it variously 60-plus times uh, Obamacare right. one could be forgiven for thinking that the House leadership would have had a replacement a proposition in mind and ready and waiting for a presidential candidate who won office uh, promising uh, to uh, to keep some of that uh, plan. Uh, it's, it's going to be, uh, what, what is your assessment right now? Will it be this year, next year, 
Well, it could be this year. It could be. But I have also, the president said it, it could go into, you know, the rudiments are there, and we just can't predict the timeline only because there are so many different moving parts. But I do assure you of one thing, the urgency and the action on this particular issue will not let up. This is one that is not just check the box and put over there and we'll get to that sometime, sometime later before re-election. This is a very serious centerpiece of President Trump's agenda and he will make good on that promise to repeal and replace it. Um, you know, but he also has taken into account the, the Council of, of Healthcare Professionals, of his advisors, looking very forward to talking to Secretary of HHS, right. Tom Price and his advisors, his team, uh, certainly has been talking to Leader McConnell, Speaker Ryan, many different people there. Um, Seema Varna, who's the new head of the Medicare and Medicaid, mm -hmm. she's been involved also. So there are many different moving parts here, but I'm very confident that uh, the issue that I believe helped Republicans win in 2010, 2014, and 2016, really three of the four elections since President Obama won in 2008, uh, Obamacare, uh, it, it's, going to, it's going to change in this country. And the way, that we, the way that we access and we receive our health insurance will change fundamentally. Much more patient-centric, much more uh, less government-focused, much more free market. And uh, the leaks from the uh, White House and the telephone calls with the uh, uh, two of the foreign leaders with whom the president spoke uh, under investigation. Uh, what is your expectation? Uh, and if you will, uh, give us a sense of where you are right now with that investigation. Well, when they're characterized as, quote, leaks from the White House, it may be a bit misleading that people think that's where it came from. There are different parties that would have had uh, privy to that information. And, uh, and, and so I will let the investigation continue without me projecting what its findings will be, but I will tell you, I will repeat that the president has uh, been very negative about any leaks, has really pushed back upon them in no uncertain terms as well he should. Uh, he needs to have private conversations with these leaders. He has said that there was a complete mischaracterization of the tone and the content of those calls, but he also at the same time will put America first, whether it's in these phone calls or in these upcoming meetings with foreign leaders, um, many of which are getting scheduled right now, Lou. That's going to that that pace will really pick up soon, uh, but but I don't think that the leaks came from certain people because they would have been unflattering, and they they certainly didn't come from the White House. But there are other people who are privy to that information, and then I think also want to put some of their own flourish on the calls that ends up being an inaccurate reporting of what happened. Inaccurate reporting, hard to imagine, but there it is. <laughs> Delian Conway, thanks for being with us. We appreciate it. Thank you, Lou. We appreciate the platform. Thank you. Thank you. We're coming right back with much more. Stay with us. Breaking news now on Iran. Two U.S. officials tell Fox News Iran fired off five.